whoops and bellies, bronzing bald-headed bastards and their kids, screaming, clanking, whirling at the gate. Beyond, looping track bones unravel upwards, carcass ribs of some hellish dragon, some piñata of the heavens, whose battered ribcage no longer fills with flame, whose treasure now is limp and lame. Let's go on the log flume, she said. And we did. Imitation Mississippi soundscape came through green enamel speakers, banjo playing bears whose claws, I guess, made worthy picks as so do mine when frenzied sickness does not bite them down. So up and round, paraded like the prize we were, young people ripe for the tricking, upraised before the fall, which came like all falls do from ideas we could not see through. Lunch we took in vampiric dining halls, where muggy shuntings and imitation cheese prefabrications bothered on, and still the children whirled and laughed in fantasies fulfilled and old illusions reaffirmed, and then she touched me briefly on the hand. Behind the aging balloon stand, and looked beyond where we stood, at what I never knew into the dark side of some lakeside wood. Right, I said to the car park, and out, where men like me, red-faced and irked, began to honk and toot and cough and reach around their headrests to admonish what they could and look away from where they should at the faded love within her eyes. The waning that could see through buildings, see through motorways, see beyond the many glassy knolls that flew by to the great unending land of lost affection, whose hosts are ever only you and I, and whose deep valleys we forever fill with these facile theme park goings. <laughs> 